Greetings and salutations, everybody, and happy Fire Prevention Week. Um, this is a national uh, week-long awareness campaign done by the National Fire Prevention Awareness People. <laughs> um, so with that in mind, um, I wanted to do a project that kind of went with fire prevention and with art. Um, our little ones, if you've got little brothers and sisters, they were drawing a fire truck with us. Um, but if you're one of my big kids, grades three through five, you're going to be doing something a little bit different. So when you're at school, we practice fire drills. And those fire drills that you've been doing since you were in kindergarten, and even if you went to a different school prior to coming to Crown Point Elementary, you had fire drills at that school. It's meant for us to practice. So the event, in the event of a real emergency, we know what to do. And knowing what to do will actually keep you from getting as scared as you might be if you didn't know what to do. Um, that's why we've practiced those fire drills. And you guys know that when you're here in school, um, you hear that fire alarm go off, you know, stand up, push your chairs, get lined up, teacher goes out. Um, once you hear the all clear, we come back. But the question I ask is, how many of you have done a fire drill at your house? Yeah, I'm thinking a lot of us really haven't. And that's a place where a fire is more likely to occur. So it's really important that we practice at home as well as being in school. That way, in case something does happen at home, we know what to do. Our family knows what to do. So with that in mind, what we're going to do today is we're going to create a floor plan of our house so that we can outline exits and paths we need to take in case there is an emergency, such as a fire, and we have to evacuate our house. So this is something you can do once we get done with this. Um, we've got a four-day weekend coming up over fall break. You can say to your family, hey, let's practice a fire drill here at home. If they look at you, say, hey, you know, Winter is coming. Um, a lot of our families have wood burning stoves. Um, some of us use electrical space heaters and those are extremely dangerous, especially if they get tipped over on carpet. So that's what we're gonna do today. We are gonna make a floor plan of our house so that you can move forward and you can create a fire drill and a fire plan at your house. Now, before anyone says, well, what does this have to do with art? Creating a floor plan is actually one of the many, many different kinds of art that are out there. And the type of art this is called is called it's drafting. So and if this is something you're into, if you like designing houses and floor plans or designing buildings, drafting could be something that you pursue in the future. OK, so before we get started, let me talk about what our objective is. And I just kind of said that. What we're going to do, our objective is I can create a floor plan of my house by using line and shapes. OK, let me go one more time. I can create a floor plan of my house by using lines and shapes. So when we think about a house, what's the most common shape we think of? Well, actually, I guess there's two. What do you think of? Squares, rectangles, right? Most of our houses are going to be that, okay? Unless you have a whole gun, right? And how many sides is that? Someone tell me. Well, you know what? I have seen them in five sides, which is a pentagon. But I actually got to see one time that was actually an octagon. It had eight sides. It was huge. Um, all right. So let's talk about what we're going to need in order to do this project. First thing you're going to need is paper. Line paper is fine. Clear paper if you have it. If you have grid paper, that's even better. That's awesome. We're going to need a pencil because we're going to be doing some sketching. And really important, especially with this project, because we're going to make a lot of goof ups on our lines. 
we need an eraser. And then something that's very important when you're doing any kind of drafting is a ruler. Now, this is a special kind of ruler. This ruler is called a T-square. It has this bar across it here. And that's used so that you can put it on the edge of a piece of paper and slide it back and forth and make sure that you get straight lines. Um, I found this one on Amazon for about $5. This is a really small one. They make some that are almost three feet long and made out of metal. So but you can just use a ruler. And last but not least, what I said we were going to need is a little bit weird, but we are going to need a red colored pencil. OK, so these are things you should have. If you don't, pause the video, go get them so that way you're ready to go. All right, let's dive into this. So step one of our floor plan project. Take a look. You are need you're going to need to take a walk around your house. You're like, oh, but I know my house. Mm, take a walk anyways. And I want you to look for little secret things like closets. Where is a closet but up against another wall? OK. What about the space? Where's your water heater? Is it in a special closet? What about your back porch? Is there a closet off your back porch? Things like this. So take a walk. Again, as we're doing this project, don't be afraid to hit to hit pause and to do these individual steps. Now, while you're taking your walk, if you want to be more technical, you could measure. I know that in my house, my floor tiles are just like the ones I have at the school, so they are one foot by one foot. So I can count them one, two, three, four, five, and figure out exactly how many feet across, okay, I should say length and depth, right, um, a certain room is. If not, it's fine. We'll just kind of wing it. So that's step one. Take a walk. Step two, make a sketch. Now this is really important. I wanna say this, sketch, sketch. I didn't say make a drawing, I said make a sketch. And there's a reason for that. <clears throat> so here is the quick sketch I made of my house. It's not perfect. There's a lot of stuff in here that I can go back and change. But that's fine because it's just a sketch. All right. So here's the sketch of my house. And I did. I took a walk, wandered around, looked at how different rooms interacted with different rooms. OK, like in here, this is actually two separate closets. And you can see how I'm sketching really lightly with my pencil. OK, and then this is a wall here and then there's a wall that comes this way in this space. Okay, there's a, now I know this is definitely not to scale. There's a bathtub, there's a toilet, okay, there's a sink. Same thing over here. I figured out that there's this, this wall where it comes into my house. The washer and dryer are in their own little room right here, which makes it so that this room has almost like a little bit of a walkway to get in there. But on the other side on over here, this is where my water heater is and my heater. Okay. And then there's a, my back door. And then off of that, over in here, there's some shelves. And then outside, there's a closet with a door. And then I thought, well, what is this blank space right here that's in my wall? And I realized my swamp cooler is outside right there. So that's where the ductwork goes in my house and up into my attic. Uh, my kitchen counters. Actually, in truth, my refrigerator is right here. And then my kitchen counters kind of wrap around like this. And I know there's this weird thing here because I've tried putting a doggy door up there. It doesn't work. And here's my living room. My front door. It's right here. My back door, right? I, I took note of where my windows were. There's a window. 
window, a window, a window, another window, another window. This is really important, especially if we're establishing a fire drill floor plan, because sometimes you cannot get out the door. OK, sometimes you have to go out a window. There's a window here. OK, so this is my sketch. So that was step two. Make a sketch. Again, I'd like you guys, if you can, you can pause. Do this step. Or even stop the video and then come back and pick up in the next one. So. Step three. Finalize your lines. <clears throat> so what that means is where I have my sketch and I've gone through and double checked and made sure that, yeah, this wall's there, that wall's there, there's my back porch, yep, 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 yep. Now I'm ready to finalize my lines. And that's where we're going to use the ruler. Because you want to, if you're doing a drafting plan, you want to make sure you have nice straight lines. So I'm just going to pick one space of mine to finalize. I'm not going to do my whole plan. So let's just finalize up here. And again, you can see how I'm going to use my this T square. I can line this up right here. Here's the front of my house. I'm going to use my pencil and make a nice hard line. Different than my sketching line, right? And then here's the side of my house here. If you would like <clears throat> another option you have, is to use a marker or a black pen once you get done with final, to, to, actually I should say, to finalize your lines. So here is my black pen and I wanna take this and do it like that, okay. Didn't really show up that well, but it's okay. All right, and let's finalize this line. Nice and straight. Make this line. Oops, I'm not using my drafting thing like I should. Okay. Because I know this wall doesn't actually look like that. Finalize my lines. Now, what also do I mean by finalize my lines? That's where this guy comes in. So once I've finalized and got that nice straight line with my ruler, I can go back and erase all my little sketch marks. So now I have a nice smooth line there. Let's do that up here too. Now, if you accidentally go over and erase your finalized line, well, let's grab your ruler, line it back up there. I love this one because it's clear. Line it back up there. Use your pencil. Get yourself that nice start line again. Here's where I had a really big mess. Look at this. Oh, wrong eraser. Don't use the pencil eraser. You're using this eraser. Okay. So there's where I'm talking about finalizing my lines. Now, the next step with this, and if you've gone around and taken your walk, this one's very important. After you've finalized all your lines, you need to find your exits. And you're going to make a very special mark to show where your exits are. And I kind of was already doing that in my sketch. So I know that right here on my house, there's a door. And in order for you, if you want to indicate that it's a door, you want to show which direction it opens. So my door opens that way. And some fancy plans, I'll even make a half circle like this to show that that's a door that opens inward. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with my windows. But you see how this line here, let me make that darker, that door shows it's a door and not a window. Okay, here's another window. Finding my exits. And then I've got a window here, which actually I realized it's a little bit bigger than that. And actually, now looking at it, I think my plan could have come over here a little bit further. Now, some fancy drafty people, <laughs> what they'll do is they will use a different colored pen, which I'm professional of me, it has rolled off my desk. 
they'll use blue to show it's a window. Ah, there it is. Okay. They'll take blue to show it's a window. Kind of like mean like it's glass. Okay. And I have a window over here. Okay. And that's what I mean by finding your exits. You want to make sure you have those clearly marked. Oops. Sorry, I'm drifting again. There we go. All right. So that is your step four. Find your exits. And then you come down to the final step, which is make the plan. This is where your red colored pencil comes in. Okay. So on my plan, I could say that since this is an exit, I can make a red arrow. That shows it's an exit. Now, if I'd finalized all my lines, I would have also said that this is an exit. If you're drawing in one of the bedrooms, and let me just kind of go in there really quick. So this is a door that opens in. You can make a little half round if you want. And this is a window. Every room in your house should have two exits. Believe it or not, even when you're in a classroom, technically, there's two exits. There's the door and there's the window. So when I say here that I want to find my exits, I can say this is an exit and this is an exit. Because if something happens, let's say my dryer caught on fire, okay? I can't get out this way and go past it. I'm going to have to go out the window, which means I'm going to open my window, knock out my screen, and I'm going to go out my window. All right. So for each one of the rooms in your house, you need to have two exits. That's extremely important. Now, the other thing that happens, but it's way out here is you need to have a meeting place. Okay. Think about our fire drills at school. We know where to go. Well, we usually go with our teachers, but we know that if I get separated from my teacher, I know I'm going to go line up if, on the fence or maybe I'm out on the field, or maybe I'm out front by the, um, in the parking lot against that fence out there, okay? Your family needs to have a meeting place. And some of the common meeting places are, let's say a lamp post that's outside your house, or maybe there's a tree down the street. Make sure you establish this meeting place. Because if something happens and people are going out exits this way and they're going out exits this way and maybe they're going out exit this way, they all need to have that one place where everybody's going to meet up so you can make sure that everybody is safe and accounted for. Okay. Seems pretty easy, right? Mm. Might be a little bit more difficult than you think, but I have faith in you guys. So let me review my steps really quick on how we're going to do this. It's not the first step. Step one, take a walk. Walk around your house, figure out where all the walls are, maybe secret closets, okay, washer and dryer, water heater. Number two, make a sketch. Don't finalize any lines until you get done. Once you have an idea of how that sketch is like and you think, OK, yep, that line goes there, that line goes there and you have a pretty good uh, floor pan made out, then you're going to finalize your lines. 
And this is where you're going to use the ruler. Okay. Once you have your lines finalized, find your exits. Find your exits. And I showed you that you can use that by making that double line that shows it's a door and then show which way the door opens. And then if you want, you can make the little rounded. Okay. Um, if you want to use a blue marker to show a window, then you can do that. So find your exits. And step five, the last is to make a plan. And that means sitting down with your floor plan and discussing it, saying, OK, well, I'll go out the window if that happens. Now, if you can get out the door, don't bust out the window or anything, right? But sit down and make that plan, OK? Do not forget the meeting place. This is extremely important, all right? So there we go. Then once you have your plan done and it's all finalized and it looks pretty, you could actually hang it up on the fridge so everybody in the family can see it and remember it. OK, in our school, we always post them by the door. All right. But I definitely want you guys I should say make a plan and then coming off of make a plan. This is the last step. Right. We need to practice. We need to practice. Especially if you have younger brothers and sisters or maybe grandmas and grandpas that live with you. This part right here is very important. OK, another reason for practice. What if you have pets? How are you going to get your pets out of the house? Don't go running and looking for them. They'll find their own way out for the most part. OK, but that's where this practice part is part is really, really, really important. Let me move this out of the way so you can see all the steps. So go through with this video. You can see my little sketch there. All right. Um, pause it as you go through the different steps if you need to. And when you're finished, um, if you would like, I, I shouldn't say like, I should make it mandatory, but if you can, um, go ahead and send me your finalized plan. Um, I'd like to see how you uh, drew it out. And I look forward to hearing when we come back from fall break on how many of you guys did practice. Okay. All right. There's a link below this meeting um, that takes you to another website that has all kinds of resources for fire prevention week. Sound good? All right, you guys, stay safe. Have a great day and an even better tomorrow. I'll see you soon.